Hey everyone, today I'm going to get you started with the basics of using the animator in Unity. We're going to start by building a basic scene, adding in a sample object and some basic animations. Uh, we're going to add in our own custom scripts and eventually work into importing a model and adding custom animations to the scene. So this is our basic Unity setup. We have an empty scene. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is add a plane. This will act as the ground in our scene. Make sure we're in scene view. We can add a material to this plane. We'll call this floor. I don't know, give it a nice off green color. Next we'll add in our cube. Now we want to make sure that the box collider is and the mesh collider is present for both the plane and the cube and we want to make sure that uh, is trigger is not selected for either. And then with our cube selected we'll add a rigid body. When we go in to test our game, we can see that the rigid body is in fact working and that the cube is affected by the laws of gravity. So I don't really like this view that I'm seeing in the game view. And one way to change that is to go to my main camera and then um, kind of position uh, where I want the scene to be and press Control shift f it's a shortcut key that aligns the camera to our view. So now when we play out our scene, we can see uh, it's, a, it's a much better view. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is add an animator to our cube object. We do this by going to Add Component, Animator. You can see nothing selected in there right now and there's no controller to choose from. So this means we're going to have to go into our assets and build an animator controller. And we'll call this cube AC, uh, AC for animator controller. So here we have our basic animator window. Um, this basically controls the states and the transitions between animations. Uh, we don't have any animations at the moment. So what we're going to do is go to create animation and we'll call this scale. And now when we click this uh, animation, the scale animation, it opens up the animation window. And by default, I think that uh, Unity doesn't have the animation window selected. So you can always just go into window and then select animation or uh, the shortcut key control six. And I like to put it um, in this projects tab right here. So we have a project console and the animation tab. And this is uh, the basic timeline for uh, the animations which you'll be building out. So we can add properties. Here we see samples, and that's the number of frames. So at 60, at 60 frames a second, this animation will take up one second. Um, and I'm going to change this to 120. I want to add this as a scale animation. So I'm going to add a property. Oh wait, first what we're going to want to do is open up our animation controller and pull scale onto it. And then with our cube selected, we're going to want to pull, we're going to want to go to our animator and make sure that the cube AC is set for the controller in our cube object. 
And this is all done just by dragging and dropping these assets into each other. So now the cube is referencing the animator controller, which is referencing our scale animation. But nothing is set for the scale animation yet. So we can double click this scale animation. We're going to want to make sure that this is selected to loop time. Make sure you drag the scale animation onto the cube. And now when we go to the animation panel, we see that add property has become highlighted. So we have this one second or two second or 120 frame animation and nothing's happening. So we can go to add property and we're going to want this to be a scale animation. So we'll select transform and we'll select scale and just press this little plus button right here. And now we want this to be a looping animation. So we can press the record button and you notice that uh, our scale transform has become highlighted with this red color, meaning that we are recording the scale input. So any changes we make to these parameters will be referenced in the timeline and they'll save to the animation. So I just want a subtle change in size. So I'll set this to 1.1. And then I'll press the record button again. And now when we scrub over this animation, we can see that it is scaling up and down. Looks as if it's breathing. We can go to our animator And we can see that entry is now applying to scale. Stop playing that from the animation. And when we press play, we can see that the cube falls because it's a rigid body. And then it animates this uh, breathing or this, this scale animation that we created. So now we can go back into animator and from the entry position, we have one basic transformation to scale. We'll make another animation. And we'll call this move up. drag it onto our cube. And now when we go to the animation controller with our cube selected, we can see that we now have an option for this new animation called move up. And now move up, we want to affect the position transform. Once again, we'll press record and we'll change the Y position to be a bit higher. Test the animation. Press record again to confirm the animation. And now in our animator, we have this, uh, this new move up animation. We'll go to scale, right click, and say make transition. And this is how we transition between animations using the animator. So now when we press play, we'll see one loop of the scale transformation and then the move up transformation. But this is a pretty boring animation. So in order to make this loop through itself, we can make another transition by right clicking move up and attach that to scale. Now when we press play, we see that the cube plays the scale animation and then the trans and then the positional transform animation move up. So we have both of these animations in place. 
Now this is where using the animator can be somewhat limiting. Uh, we're given this interface to move back and forth between the, the actual shape itself and different animations. But what if we wanted to code in uh, some sort of control for this, this cube animation? This is where we'll have to start scripting functions to use with the animator. And so first we're going to want to set a parameter for these transitions. So in our animator, we can see that there's a parameters tab. And in this parameters tab, if you go over to plus, you can see there's four options, float, int, bool, and trigger. So these all offer you a uh, different transitions different parameters to call from your script and they all have uh, unique sort of use cases um, we'll be using bool today because this is just a simple toggle we what we want to do is is when we press the space bar we want our cube to animate so you can see how bool will offer us this uh, this sort of um, ability to turn on and off the true or false um, nature of whether our cube is animating or not. And that's what a bool is. It's really just a, a true or false condition. And so these are all conditions for which the animations will start or the transitions will start. Uh, you most likely use float in a situation where you wanted to use some sort of decimal number. Um, maybe if a character was walking and uh, the player was holding down the control for uh, running at a certain point you could increment by decimals in order to uh, switch from walking to running um, int might use a, a random number um, to set the condition for which the animation starts um, and these are just integers without decimals one two three four five um, the bool is what we'll be using today, which is just a true or false condition. And then the trigger is a little more uh, based off your custom logic that you put in the game. Um, you could use the trigger for setting a win condition or for um, setting a condition in which an enemy character dies. Um, and this uh, allows you more sort of... Um, ability to, to get to, to make your code more more custom and, and do create functions that sort of work for you in this situation. So we'll be using the bool. We'll select this and we'll name this bool is animating. Now when we select the transition in the animator, it pulls up this view in the inspector that shows us how the animation works. So we have this scale, we have the move up and then it goes back to scale. And this has ex exit time is checked. And when we pull down this settings, we see that the exit time is set to 0.75 and the transition duration is set to 0.25 and when we add these uh, the exit time and the transition together we get one second so this gives you control over deciding how this cube will transition between animations um, and uh, the length of time it will spend in each of these animations and transitioning between these animations because this is just a simple explanation of the animator and it's a simple uh, transition between animations uh, we'll just leave these at their default settings making sure that has exit time is still checked when we go down to these conditions we can click the plus button and it'll automatically populate with this is animating parameter, this bool condition that we set up before. And the reason we're setting up this condition is because we want, uh, we want to be able 
to communicate with this script so that when the user is pressing the space button, the cube will begin its animation. So from here, we're actually going to go into our script editor into Visual Studio and start to write out the basic scale animation, our cube animation script. So um, we'll go into our cube, we'll click add component, new script, and we'll call this script uh, basic animation. And press enter. Now in our project view, we see that it's been populated with this new C-sharp script that we just built. And so here we have our basic uh, empty script template for Unity. Uh, we're going to start by writing in a private animator class and we'll call it animator and then a private bool called is animating and we'll set this to false and now within our start function we want the script to have access to this animator component so we'll say animator equals get component animator And now when we start our game, it will have this private animator component to reference for the script. And when the user presses space, we want this animation to start. So we'll set up a if condition, input get key down, key code dot space, animator dot set bool is animating and then we'll change the boolean to true is animating equals true so now whenever the user presses space it will change this boolean condition which we set up to true so actually we're going to want to add two conditions for this if statement. Uh, one of them being if the user is pressing space, but the other one being that if the object is not already animating. And we do this by typing and and exclam exclamation point is animating and this means is not animating the exclamation point uh, denotes that it is not what comes after it and now we want to if the user presses space again we want to stop our animation so we'll write else if input dot key down key code dot space and and is animating if the object is already animating animator dot set bool is animating false is animating equals false and now we can go back over our code to make sure we didn't make any minor mistakes we can see here, um, kind of reading it line by line, what, uh, what the game is going to do with this script. So in void update, it's called once per frame, it'll check if the user is pressing space and if the object is not animating. And in the case that the user is pressing space, and the object is not animating, then it will change this boolean that we've set to true. In the case where the user presses space and the object is animating, then it will set this boolean which we've set in our animator to false. It's good practice to look at your code and kind of 
read it line by line and make sure that it is functioning as you want it to. So just to make sure that we're taking in the right input and that these functions are being met, we'll write in a debug log that says is animating and we'll add another into our else if and this will say isn't animating. Now when we return to Unity, we're given no console errors. We can go back to our scene. When we click play, our cube is scaling up and down. And when we press space, it's iterating through the animation loop that we've set up in the animator. We're also given this feedback in our console that shows us that it is meeting these functions and that the cube is in fact animating. When we press space again, the cube stops animating. Something else worth noting is that when we press space and we go to the animator, it's looping through each of these animations and playing them in their entirety. This is another way in which we can confirm that our animations are behaving as we want them to is by checking their processing in the animator while the game is running. And remember, any changes that we make to the animator to the game, uh, through the inspector, um, while the game is running, will not be saved. This is just for testing purposes. Uh, so this is important if you plan on making some big changes while the game is running. So now that we got our basic animation set up, let's see how we can bring in a custom model with custom animations and uh, put our new anim animator knowledge to the test. So uh, included in the, um, in the link, in, included in the description to this video, there's a flower model that I made for this tutorial. Um, so you can follow the link and it'll take you to this uh, public Google, Google Drive. Drive. Click, Click download. download. Now we can save it directly to the uh, the assets folder of our project to pull in this flower.png. Um, this is the basic material for this flower. It's kind of crazy looking, but it gives it a nice little angry, sassy flower face. All right, so when we pull this flower in, um, we can see when we select the flower from our assets that it has been imported with this basic animation. Uh, from within the inspector, we're going to want to select loop time and press apply. And now we want to see our flower from our uh, main game view. So we can pull back to a view in which we can see our flower, select our main camera, and press Control shift f again. We can also change the directional light by selecting the directional light and then pressing E and rotating it so that it shines more light on the flower. Now when we press play, we can see that our flower is stationary. It's not animating yet. And this is because there's no animation set for the flower. So we can fix this by building another animator controller. We'll call this flower AC. When we open this up, we're given the basic uh, entry and any state. Now we can go into our flower and select this animation, pull it into the scene, and when we play,
Our flower still isn't animating. So to fix this, we'll go back to our flower in the inspector and make sure that the animator controller is on the flower. And we're going to want the flower to have similar behavior to the cube that we just built. By pressing space, we want the flower to animate. So in order to do this, we'll add in the animation that we made for the cube, which was this scale animation. And then we'll add in the animation for the flower. So when we start the game, we'll see that the flower is scaling up and down. But when we press space, only our cube is moving. And we, if we go back into scene view, we can see this from behind. For now, let's uh, deselect the cube to make sure that it's not rendering in our game view. We can go back into animator. Our animator for the flower, add in a transition. And we'll just add in one transition this time. I don't want the uh, I don't want to have to press space twice to stop the animation. And then we'll add in a, another Boolean parameter named is animating because we want to be able to use the behavior from that original animation script. We'll select the transition, add in is animating, and then we'll go back to our flower in the animator or in the inspector and we'll add a component We'll add in the script. What did I call that script again? Basic animation. So now when we play, we see that our flower is scaling up and down, which is has sort of become the idle animation for both of these shapes. And when we press space, it goes into its uh, basic animation. And so this is the basics of using the animator in Unity. Uh, it's definitely not straightforward and it confuses a lot of beginners, intermediates, even advanced users of, of Unity. So, so when you're developing, it's important to understand sort of the strengths and weaknesses of, of using the animator. Um, and I know that these videos may seem a little overly basic, but you have to learn to walk before you run with some of this content. And if you think about it, we learned a lot today. We learned about the animator controller. We learned about uh, creating animations using the timeline and the animation window in Unity. We learned about scripting animations, working with animation parameters, even uh, importing our own models and working with custom animations. So that's it for this deep dive into the Unity animator. And now you know all about Unity's animator, its interface to control the animation system. Thanks for watching.